Cranial nerve 7 is called the facial nerve. Its functions are taste to the anterior two thirds of the tongue, the muscles, the facial expression. It's the efferent arm of the corneal reflex, and it provides a parasympathetic supply to the lacrimal, submandibular, and sublingual glands. After the facial nerve has left the skull through the stylomastoid foramen, it passes into the parotid gland where it divides into five branches. From top to bottom, these are the temporal, the zygomatic, the buccal, the marginal mandibular, and the cervical. The mnemonic I use for remembering this is 10 zombies buggered my colleague. The first thing to look for when testing the facial nerve is for an obvious facial droop, of which this patient has none. Next, you go on to examine the muscles of facial expression. Would you please remove your glasses for me? And now raise your eyebrows up to the ceiling, and you're looking for the forehead creases to be equal on both sides. Now screw your eyes tightly shut, and do not let me open them. Thank you. Uh, puff out your cheeks, and do let me compress them. And now smile, showing your teeth, and you're looking for the smile to be symmetrical. Other tests that you can do for the facial nerve include using sugar applied to the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. In a facial nerve lesion, the sense of taste would be diminished. You can also use an oroscope to look at the eardrum for the vesicles of ramsey hunt syndrome. And lastly, you may note that the patient is complaining of sounds seeming a lot louder than they actually are. This is termed hyperacusis, and it's due to loss of innovation of the superior muscles.